Max Planck Institute for Software Systems, and Emory University. Sad. Serving DNNs like clockwork. Performance predictability from the bottom up. Starring the following people. Arpan Gujarati. Reza Karimi. Zafiya Zayed. Wei Hao. Anton Kaufman. Emir Vikhrosam. Jonathan Mace. In a world where everyone is doing machine learning. Where deep neural networks are on the critical path of our web requests. Did you know that Facebook by itself serves over 200 trillion inferences every day? But the models became too many. We have DNNs that are trained for personalization, we have DNNs trained for big applications, we have DNNs trained for the small applications, we have DNNs trained for A-B testing. So model serving systems were built. A model serving system is a hosted service that takes in a fully trained DNN model and serves inferences made to that model. It's actually built to target the narrow waste between the vast machine learning ecosystems and the underlying hardware. There are several reasons why inference serving in cloud or data center is challenging. The cloud providers need to deal with many different models and uses, and the models may have different resource requirements, different execution time requirements. The inference requests that arrive for these models may have different rates and may come with different regularities. For example, the request might be periodic in nature, bursty, they might even have a sustained high rate of arrival, or the request can be arbitrary in pattern. But even with specialized hardware. There are over 100 companies developing specialized inference accelerator chips. The serving system inevitably needs to use some form of hardware accelerators like GPUs because CPUs just aren't fast enough for these kinds of latency requirements. However, the trade-off is that hardware accelerators are also much more expensive than CPUs. Not all workloads have enough demand to justify a dedicated set of hardware resources. Therefore, a key goal of serving systems is to share the hardware resources among all users and models while satisfying their individual latency SLOs as well. Few systems can meet the stringent latency requirements. We want the web requests that are latency sensitive to get the results from the DNN inferences within a few dozen milliseconds. But that's really hard to do if the model serving systems are just spending most of their time booting up a VM or loading up a container or transferring model weights onto a GPU. Now this phenomenon is not unique to Clipper or even not unique to model serving systems per se. Many systems have high tail latency because the system is typically composed of unpredictable pieces. For example, one of the ways that Clipper achieves high utilization is by executing multiple inference requests in parallel. Doing this can increase throughput modestly, say by about 25%, but doing this also introduces much more variability in request latency, because now concurrent requests are competing for resources. Until now, clockwork. So what is clockwork? When you execute a single DNN inference at a time, the latency turns out to be extremely predictable. And this is the starting point for Clockwork's design. Clockwork adopts a contrasting approach to previous systems when it comes to end-to-end -end model serving. Since the core DNN execution is fundamentally predictable, we aim to preserve predictability in every part of our design. This prevents, by design, high tail latencies. Recall first that our goal is to not just serve one model, but thousands of models across many different users. In this setting, sharing is inevitable. In fact, we want to maximize sharing because GPUs are expensive. But sharing can also lead to resource contention and unfounded delays if not done carefully. 
even though a single DNN inference executes in a predictable fashion, its response time at a worker can still become unpredictable. So as a first step, we want to ensure that the workers that execute inferences across multiple models and users behave in a predictable fashion from an outside perspective. We do this by stripping the worker nodes of all decisions such as scheduling decisions and state management decisions. Clockworks workers follow an exact set of actions instead which are sent to them via a remote set of APIs. Instead of letting the workers make separate individual decisions about what to execute and where to execute, all decisions are consolidated at a centralized controller. The controller can this way make smart load balancing decisions and also proactive scheduling decisions based on an accurate global view of the system. In other words, the controller makes all decisions centrally, it then sends an exact sequence of actions to each worker for executing inferences. Finally, Clockwork scheduling logic is aware of deadlines. It tries to maximize resource utilization, but at the same time ensure that it doesn't waste work by starting something that is bound to miss its deadline. For example, if a request arrives at 2016 that's set to expire four time units later, then it will simply not be allowed to enter the system unless we can guarantee that it will be out of the system by 2020. Doing this is only possible if you can accurately predict the outcome of your actions, which in turn is made possible by the use of predictable workers and consolidated choices at a centralized controller. So we will now step through each of these principles in more detail, starting with building a predictable worker. We can think of a worker node as comprising of a main memory, which is typically a few terabytes in size, and some GPU memory, which is much smaller in size. It is common for all models to reside in the main memory and for the framework to use the GPU memory as a cache rather and switch models in and out depending on their demand. To begin with, users upload pre-trained DNNs ahead of time, which reside in the main memory. When an inference request arrives, the model needs to be first loaded into the GPU memory. We say that such a model is cold if it is not on the GPU. To execute a cold inference, we first have to transfer the model's weights into the GPU memory. This takes a few milliseconds depending on the size of the model. Now, the inference request can execute on the GPU. Next, if another request for the same model arrives, since the model weights are already in the GPU memory, the request can just execute on the GPU immediately. We say that a model is warm if it is already in the GPU memory. In general, at any point of time, there can be multiple models loaded in the GPU memory and even multiple inferences executing over the GPU in parallel. So Clockwork must get rid of all sources of unpredictability in order to build a predictable worker process. The first thing we do therefore is to not run any concurrent inferences at all on the GPU. As I mentioned earlier, this isn't actually a terrible idea. DNN inference is a highly parallel operation in itself and we only saw that the throughput increase due to parallel inferences is only up to 25%. And that throughput increase also actually quickly disappears once we start batching multiple inferences together. The second thing we do is to remove memory management choices from the worker. Workers do not decide when to load model weights into GPU memory. Instead, workers pre-allocate all memory in advance and expose an API with a load and unload, unload action for explicitly moving models into and out of GPU memory. Finally, the worker does not implement any best effort queuing logic. Instead, it simply uses deadline driven queues, one queue for load and unload actions and another for info actions. If the preconditions for an action are not met, for example, if a model isn't loaded but an info action arrives before, the action is simply aborted by the worker. The queues dispatch operations one at a time, so there can only be one load and one info action executing at any point of time. As a result, the worker makes no important decisions. It has outsourced all these decisions via the load, unload and info action APIs to the central controller. So the choices about which actions to execute and when are made by a centralized controller. The controller receives all of the incoming inference requests from all users and it makes all decisions about where and when to load, unload and infer. To do this effectively, 
Workers also constantly measure the execution latency of their actions and send those measurements back to the controller. The controller can then predict when resources will become free on each worker and whether actions would actually complete in time to meet their SLOs. The controller is also aware of which workers have which models loaded into their memory. Overall, this enables smarter load balancing decisions and also proactive scheduling decisions. It enables the controller to predict worker hotspots ahead of time and delay its choices to the very last millisecond. So let's try to understand the scheduling in clockwork using an example. In this example, we will refer to just one worker node, W1. W1 currently has three models loaded into GPU memory, red star, yellow triangle, and blue circle. Currently, an infer action is executing for yellow triangle. I have also depicted two more pending infer actions for the yellow triangle in the infer queue of W1. Since these actions were previously scheduled by the controller itself, the controller knows when the infer actions will complete and therefore it is aware that the GPU will become idle only after the three infer actions for yellow triangle are done and I denote this time using T3. Now suppose a new request for blue circle arrives at the controller. Let's say this request has a very tight SLO such that its deadline is actually earlier than time T3. The controller knows that the worker is busy until then, so the controller can simply cancel the request in the knowledge that it cannot produce a response in time for the user anyway. So this avoids the worker doing wasted work. On the other hand, now suppose that an inference request for a red star arrives, but with a more relaxed SLO. The controller can also verify that the inference request would successfully finish before its deadline, since the controller knows T3 and knows how long red star info actions typically take to execute. In other words, the controller can check that time T3 plus delta infer is less than time T deadline. It therefore decides to schedule a red star infer action. Now, until now, I have been talking as though Clockwork can perfectly predict exactly how long every action on every worker takes. In practice, perfect predictability is impossible and there can be occasional misprediction. For instance, what if the last inference request for the yellow triangle does not finish on time for some reason and it actually overshoots its expected execution time. This means the estimate for time t3 was actually wrong to start with and it might delay the completion of the red star infer action. So to tolerate such misprediction, Clockwork also specifies the latest time by which an action should start. In this case, if the worker node cannot start the info action for red star by time t latest, it cancels the action. Doing this helps localize the impact of such mis mispredictions and prevent cascading faults. In summary, Clockwork centralized design not only helps prevent wasteful work as we saw in this example, but it also helps localize faults and manage other factors such as load to infer dependency on the worker and choosing between different batching strategies for improving the throughput for users. But is Clockwork real? So we have implemented Clockwork in about 26,000 lines of C++ code and we will now look at few of the evaluation points. For now, I will focus on the final three questions and I refer you to the paper for the full evaluation. For these experiments, our setup consists of 12 workers, each using a Tesla V100 GPU with 32 GB GPU memory, one controller and one client for generating the workload. As a representative cloud workload, we used the Microsoft Azure function traces, which were recently released as part of the ATC 2020 paper. The workload consists of about 46,000 function traces spanned over two week period and includes a mix of different types of workload traces. We then map these traces to a set of about 4,000 model instances, which are just enough to fill our 768 GB RAM on the worker machine. These model instances cover a range of different model architectures such as ResNet, DenseNet, Inception, and many more. Clockwork's first design principle was to make the workers predictable. 
The rest of Clockwork's design relies heavily on this principle to make correct decisions. If Clockwork consistently overpredicts the action latencies, then workers may end up being idle for small periods of time. If Clockwork, on the other hand, consistently underpredicts the action latencies, then it may lead to SLO violations. In this experiment, we ran the Microsoft Azure Trace for 6 hours with a cumulative request load of around 10,000 requests per second. For each info action sent to a worker, we measured the difference between the actual action latency and the latency that was predicted by Clockwork before scheduling the action. In this graph, we report the CTF of both overprediction and underprediction errors while focusing on the higher percentile values. So an immediate observation is that Clockwork overpredicts more than it underpredicts. And this is actually by design because we chose pessimistic action estimates to err on the side of caution. Most importantly though, the prediction errors are very small relative to the actual action duration. Typical info actions range in latency from between 1 millisecond to 20 milliseconds, depending on the specific model and batch size. However, here we notice that the 99th percentile errors are only 144 microseconds and 55 microseconds respectively indicating that our predictions are very accurate. Only in extremely rare cases do we witness very high errors. To evaluate if consolidating choice helps achieve end-to-end -end predictability, we once again ran the Azure workload trace for 6 hours. The cumulative request workload was around 10,000 requests per second with periodic spikes around 12,000 requests per second. We configured each request with an SLO of 100 millisecond for this experiment. In the first graph, we report the offered load and the good put, which is the SLO compliant throughput. In the second graph, we report the latency of all completed requests, excluding any requests that may have timed out because of deadline violations. So overall, these results illustrate that Clockwork can successfully schedule such diverse workloads with thousands of models, many different users, and with a diverse set of request arrival patterns. We see this because the good put is almost identical to the offered load as you can see from the first graph, which means that Clockwork can manage the irregularities as well as the periodic spikes in the workload quite well. And also out of a total of 208 million requests, only 58 failed due to mispredictions. And for all other requests, the latency graph suggests that they completed well within their 100 millisecond SLO. Right, so Clockwork works, but Clockwork also has a limitation. Its centralized design means that it may not scale linearly with infinitely many workers. And although we have not optimized Clockwork for scalability yet, we did perform an experiment to evaluate its scalability in its current form. In this experiment, since we do not have many GPU nodes in our clusters, we used emulated workers. But from the controller's vantage point, this did not change anything. We then measure the peak good put as we vary the number of emulated workers. For up to 110 workers, Clockwork scales linearly. The peak good put in this region is only limited by the workers' utilization. But Clockwork scalability hits the ceiling at about 110 workers, after which the bottleneck shifts to the Clockwork controller. Okay, so what have we learned? Clockwork is based on a simple idea that DNN executions on GPUs exhibit negligible latency variance. This observation is both intuitive because DNN inferences involve no conditional branches, but also demonstrable in practice as we show in this paper. By recursively ensuring that internal architecture components also have predictable performance, and by concentrating all choices in a centralized controller, Clockwork is able to translate the DNN predictability into end-to-end -end predictability. Clockwork is therefore able to outperform state-of-the-art DNN serving platforms. It can efficiently fulfill aggressive tail latency SLOs as well as support thousands of models with varying workload conditions. Finally, Clockwork is open source and any contributions are welcome. You can find the source code and our contact information for any further questions at this URL. Thank you very much.